Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss the problem optimal strategy for a game. This problem previously has been asked in some of the product companies as well and it's a very easy and good problem. So let's see what the problem says and then we will see which approach will help us to solve this particular problem. Now in this problem, we will be given an array which will be of n size. Then the elements of the array represent n coin of value v1, v2, v3 up till vn. So basically if suppose that there is any ith element, so it will represent, uh, the ith element will represent the number of coins. Okay. Then after that, uh, you are playing a game against an opponent and this game is uh, going in an alternate fashion. So basically there is a game that is going on in this array and the players are changing the turn one after the other because the problem says that the game is going in alternate manner. So basically the first player will play, then after that the second player will take a chance, then after that first player will again take a chance, then second player, then first player, then second player. So alternatively they will keep on changing their chances and then after that in each turn there is a way in which they can choose an element. Okay. So in each turn a player will select either the first element or the last element. Okay. So whatever is the current situation of the array, the player is going to do what? A player can either choose the first or the last coin. First or the last element you can say from that row. And he will remove that element from the row permanently. And he will receive that value. So basically suppose there is an array and the player one will start. So if suppose that the player one starts, so he will have an option. Uh, he will, What kind of option will he have? So suppose that if this is the array, right? So if the player one will start, then you will have the elements from 0th index till n minus 1th index. So let us assume that the player one takes the 0th element. Okay. Suppose that the uh, player one takes the element which is present at 0th index. Now when the player one will take this particular element, so this much value will get updated for the player one. And then after that, what is going to happen is this particular element will be assumed that it is not present in the array. So now after this, the remaining part, the remaining array will be from the index one till n minus one, you can say, okay. Or what might happen is if you will try to generalize this. So suppose that you have the array, suppose that you have been given the array. So what will happen in general is suppose we have this particular array. So if we assume that we are currently at the ith index, uh, like i is the starting index currently and j is the ending index. So if I take the element i, Okay, if the current player takes the ith element, then from next time you will have the uh, which elements you can pick from the array. You will have the range from i plus 1 to j. Okay, so next time the ith element will not be considered because you have removed it. So from the next time you can either pick the i plus 1th or the jth element and the range of the array will be from i plus 1 to j. Or what you can do is if suppose that you have this array from i index till j index, if you pick the jth element suppose then what will happen is if you pick the jth element then you will consider uh, then you will add the jth elements value for that particular player and then after that what you are going to do is you are going to say that now the array will be from i to j minus 1 and the next player will pick either the ith element or the j minus 1th element if it is valid. Okay, so this is how it is going to be basically either a player can pick an element from the whatever is the situation of the array uh, either a player can pick from the starting or from the ending right and uh, once you are done with that then you will remove that element and that much value will get added to that particular player. Now what is your task? So basically you need to determine the maximum possible amount of money you can win if you go first. So suppose that player one will start the game okay and you are considered as the player one. What you have to do is you have to determine that what is the maximum possible amount of money that you can win if you will go first and both the players are playing optimally. What does this mean? So when they are saying that both the players are playing optimally, this basically indicates that both the players are going to play for their win. Okay. Now the thing is that whenever there is a player who is going to pick uh, any element, right? So either he can pick from the ending or from the starting, right? And then this will keep on following. So one thing that is very clear with this particular problem is there will be many possible ways, right? Many possible ways in which the players can pick the element. Okay. Because suppose that if you're the first player and you're going to start, then either you can pick the first element or the last element. 
and then after that the second player will play then your turn will come again so there will be many possibilities there will be many possible ways so whenever there is a question when you have to explore all possible ways or basically you can say all possibilities which concept comes to our mind the concept of dynamic programming comes to our mind right so this problem is nothing but concept will be dynamic programming or you can say recursion basically we'll be applying recursion but since there will be a lot of overlapping sub problems that is if a particular problem is already calculated then you would not like to calculate it again so that is why this problem will come under the category of dp and since you want to uh, explore all possible ways so you will use recursion and for the overlapping sub problems you can apply dp into it okay i hope that this particular part is clear now what all things will be there so suppose that if you will write a solve function so whenever you will write a solve function so in that solve function you will always pass the ith index and the jth index ith index will indicate the uh, current first element of the array and jth index will indicate that whatever is the situation of the array what is the last element of that current array okay that you can access and then after that you will pass several other parameters and that function will try to return you the maximum value that the player one will get if the player one is starting okay and one more thing is there that while we will write the solve function so suppose if we write the solve function so in that function we know that we will be passing the ith index we will be passing the jth index ith index will indicate the current starting jth index will indicate the current ending and then we will also pass the player okay why we will pass the player player variable will indicate that which player is playing okay i can uh, say that for player we can take 0 and 1 if the player uh, value is 0 so this means let's say the first player is playing uh, right the starting player is playing if the player uh, variable is having the value as 1 this means that the second uh, player is playing okay so this parameter we can pass and then the original array that has also been given to us now we will also pass that right so these are several things that uh, we need to keep in mind while passing because they will be important and initially we can do what we can initially mark the player value as 0 because we will say that the first player is going to win and for the first player i have taken the player value as 0 for the second player the player value would be 1 okay and after this if suppose that currently the situation is uh, from this ith index till this jth index right so either you can pick this ith index or this jth index so you will try all the possible ways and also it will depend that which player is having a chance right because suppose that if the chance is for player 1 okay if the player value is 0 suppose if the player uh, variable is having the value as 0 what does that indicate variable being 0 will indicate that the first player is playing whenever the first player is playing you will try that the first player will collect maximum amount of value right or maximum amount of money but whenever the player value will be what whenever the player value will be 1 so you can say that in that case the second player will be playing and whenever the second player is playing so you will try to do what you will try to minimize the collection of the second player okay this is very important that whenever the player value is zero so this indicates that the first player is playing so whenever the first player is playing so he can either pick the ith element or the jth element whatever uh, he has to pick out of these two you will try to maximize his choice right he, you will try to maximize the value that he will pick okay and whenever the player variable is having the value as one this means that the second player will be there and whenever second player will be playing you want the second player to collect lesser money so that more amount of money is left for the first player so that is why whenever second player's turn will be there whenever the variable will indicate that the second player's turn is there then you will do what then you will simply say that you will try to minimize the collection of the second player that is how you can maximize the collection of the first player basically i hope that this part is uh, pretty much clear to you now what will happen is as you will keep on taking the elements so every time your i and j will keep on decreasing one by one right uh, you basically the i index and the j index as you will keep on taking so your array size will keep on shrinking and basically suppose that in the starting if the ith element was uh, standing here and the jth was here so then they will uh, i and j will keep on moving one by one as the considering the way that you will pick them then what will happen after that you can say that one by one when you keep on taking the element so you are kind of removing them right so at the end of the day there would be nothing uh, there would be no element so when i and j will cross each other whenever i will be greater than j then you will say that you cannot make any collections because when i and j have crossed each other so this means that the array is completely over you have exhausted the whole array and you cannot make any further collections right so these things are there that you need to keep in mind now as i said that whenever the turn will be for player is equal to zero that is for the very first player whenever you are having a turn so for that you will try to maximize the collection and whenever the second player is going to play so you will try to 
minimize the collection that is whenever the player variable value is one so it indicates second player will play so you'll try to minimize the collection i hope that this part is clear now let's try and uh, write a little bit of code so that we can get more clarity on this firstly we will write the recursive approach and then after that we will try to optimize our approach that is we'll try to apply dynamic programming into it okay so what we will be doing here is first of all we will uh, return solve function let's say so we will call a solve function where initially we'll pass the index as zero it's starting index as zero and the last index as n minus one then we will pass the arr array as well and then initially we'll say that the zero uh, like player value will be zero indicating that the first player is playing okay after this what we will do is we will write a function that is long long solve and in this particular function we will have the int index i then the index j then after that we will also have the array arr and then we will also have the int player so if the player value is zero this means that the first player is playing if the player value is one so this means that the second player is playing in its turn so whenever the i value will be greater than zero so this means that you cannot make any collections so you will return what you will simply return zero okay this is very basic now after this what you will do is if suppose that the player value is what guys if the player value is zero so this means that the first player is playing okay first player is playing so then you will do what if the player one is playing then there are two choices right let's say there is a choice one that you can have the choice one is that you can pick the ith element if you will pick the ith element then how much value will get added arr i value is going to get added in your account and then you will call the solve function and since you have taken the ith element so now you will have the range of the array from i plus one till j and you will pass the arr array and the player will change so currently if the player was zero so you want to pass the player as what you want next time you want to pass the player as one basically right i hope that this makes sense and similarly the choice two can be what that if uh, you are having the array i uh, from the range i to j so either you can pick the ith element or you can pick the jth element so suppose that you pick the jth element then you will do what then you will uh, call the solve function and you will say that now the next range of the array will be from i to j minus one why j minus one because if you have taken the jth element so you have to remove it from the array indirectly and then you will pass the error array and then you will say that the player uh, one's turn will be there okay like player variable you will pass it as one indicating that uh, the second player is going to start right and out of these two which choice are you going to return you are going to return the maximum of the two choices why you will return the maximum of the two choices simply because whenever the first player is playing so you want to maximize the collection of the first player right otherwise suppose that the second player would have been playing okay if the second player was playing then what you will do then you will say that the choice one can be that the player uh, takes the ith element and then you can call the solve function for, for what i plus one comma j comma arr and then after the player one turn is uh, like after the second player has played then you will pass the parameter as zero indicating that the next next time the chance will be for the first player because they are taking turns alternatively now the choice two can be what that you can uh, uh, take the jth element okay and then you can call the solve function for what for i uh, comma j minus one because if the jth element is taken then you'll pass the index as j minus one then you'll pass the arr array and you will pass this uh, parameter as zero why you will pass this parameter as zero because if the second player has taken this chance so the next time the chance will be for the first player so you will pass the value as zero indicating that uh, the first player's chance will be next time okay and out of these uh, two choices you will return the minimum because if the second player is uh, playing so you you would like it to collect the minimum amount of money so that is why you will take the minimum so that more money is left for the player one to collect okay if the second player collects lesser money so your chances of collecting more money gets higher okay let's try and compile this code to check if it is working fine on the sample test cases that we have or not so yes i have made some basic error here so it says that in the solve function i have not passed this array properly so let me check what is the issue yeah so i have not uh, written long correctly now the spelling is correct so let's check uh, what is the situation now okay so i am not getting the optimal answer for some reason so whenever let's say whenever the player one was playing so let me just check if i have made any uh, mistake here so what I have done is I have passed the index as zero, then n minus one, then I have passed the error array and I have passed the player value as zero. Okay. Then if the i value is greater than j, then I am returning this thing. Okay. Otherwise, uh, what I am doing is I am passing the player value. If the player value suppose is zero, so this means that the first player is uh, having his chance. 
So if the first player is having the chance, then uh, what I will do is I will pick the uh, choice one is that I can pick the ith element. And if I do that, then I will call the solve function from i plus one comma j. Okay, and I will pass the error array and next time the chance will be for uh, the second player. So I will, I'm passing the parameter as one. Otherwise, suppose that if I if uh, I take the jth element, then I'll call the solve function i comma j minus one. Okay, and then I'll pass the error array and then I'll pass this parameter as one. And then you can say that we will do what? We will uh, return the maximum. Why we will return the maximum? Because we want to uh, maximize the collection for the first, uh, like for the first player. Otherwise, if suppose that the second player is playing, so they can be uh, two choices, right? Uh, what uh, you can uh, do. So suppose that if the player two is playing, so obviously if the player two is playing now, so the thing is that uh, whenever the player two will be playing, so whatever he will he will be collecting, you don't need to add it in your answer because the addition, if you whatever player two is connecting, you don't need to add that to the collection of the player one. So that is why we don't need to uh, add this particular value, right? So the thing is that whenever player two will be playing, so either he will pick the ith element or he will pick the jth element. Based on that, you will make the calls, but you will not add the values. Why you will not add the values? Because ultimately I have to just return the amount collected by the first player. So whatever indexes uh, uh, the player two is connect, uh, collecting, I don't have to add its value. Otherwise my answer would increase uh, because I only have to return the collection made by the first player. So that is why whenever the player two is collecting, so I will not add it in my uh, answer. Okay, so yeah, this is the thing. Now let's try and uh, compile this to check if it is working fine or not. Okay, now we are getting the same answer. Earlier you can see that we were getting more answer. Why we were getting a, a greater answer than expected? Because I was adding the value collected by the second player as well. But that is something that I don't want to do. Okay, now let's try and submit this code. It will give us a time limit exceeded. Why it will give us a time limit exceeded? Because there are a lot of overlapping sub problems here. So you can see that we are getting TLA error. How we can optimize this TLE error? So basically for this, we need to declare a, a 2D DP array because two parameters are changing here constantly, I index and J index. So what I can do here is I can simply declare a vector of vector in, uh, sorry, let's say long, long. And then after this, let's name it as V uh, or let's name it as DP. Then after that, what we will do is we will uh, declare N comma vector then long long and then n comma minus one okay so initially we will update our dp array as minus one then after this what you will do is uh we will also pass the vector of vector long long okay here the dp array will be passed so let's say ampersand dp and then we will check that if the dp of ij is not equal to minus one so this means that if that state is already calculated, so we'll not calculate it again and we'll simply return dp of ij. Otherwise, what we will do is we'll calculate it, store it and then return it. So we'll mark dp of ij as maximum of the choice one, choice two if the play, if the first player is playing and then we will uh, store, store that maximum and then return it. Okay. And otherwise what we'll do is we'll do dp of ij is equal to minimum, right? So if suppose that the play, second player is playing, then in that case also we will store the minimum of that. Okay. Uh, uh, and then uh, then after this I need to pass the DP array in the parameters. So let's pass this DP array in the parameters of uh, all the solve function calls that I am making. So here also I'll pass it and then here also I'll pass it. Okay. Then let's try and compile it. Okay. Now let's try and submit this code to check if it is getting accepted. It should get accepted now. So you can clearly see that our code is able to pass all the test cases that are there and uh, talking about the time and the space complexity of this code. So what will be the space complexity first of all, since I am uh, doing what I am declaring a 2D array of n cross n size because uh, I'm storing two parameters that is i and j. So I'm having dp of ij. So that is why the space complexity for this approach will be order of n square. What is going to be the time complexity for our approach? The time complexity will be order of n square because in the worst case there will be n squared different states because if you will see if you have i and j uh, as the uh, parameters that are changing so i can maximum have n different values and j can have maximum n different values so total number of different states will be n squared so i hope that you are clear with this particular problem make sure to comment understood if you have understood this clearly thank you for watching this video guys and keep coding thank you